light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Well, let us come before this mighty King who has brought such wonderful salvation among us. Let us praise and worship and glorify Him with all that we are, wherever we are at this time. Let me pray. Heavenly King, you are the Lord, you know all that we're going through. We are thankful to come before you, even in this different kind of a way. But this is no challenge for you. With your Holy Spirit, you can touch all of our hearts wherever we are, such that we may be drawn into worship in spirit and truth before you. Thank you for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. It couldn't go better. That whole group. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
The Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. issued a decree 
that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Family faithful.
An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But an angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I will bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord had told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now, from here, let's it's, stick it's it out. It's crawling out. Yeah, but you don't, like, you put it here. <laughs> you put it like that. That's what you're supposed to do. You just hook it. Oh. Yeah, you don't stick it in. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. It's hey. just going to fall out? That was all for your entertainment. <laughs> Joy to the world. Joy to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 2, starting at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and now we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go 
and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me so that I too can go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The Christ, the Christ has come. He has come to be with us. That is a key, the key, perhaps, um, notion at the very center of Christmas. In John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. That is a text that is very familiar to us. It is, it is, it is amazing in its depth and its significance. Because Christianity is, of course, not the only religion in the world. People have had a spiritual drive since there have been people. And they have searched for God. They have searched all over the place. You, you, can, you can try and do that, but the real God, I mean, you can... There, 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 I'm sorry, there have been people who have, who have been looking for God in, in nature spirits. You know, they, they look around, they're trying to see, where is God? Where is God? They would look in light. They would look in the clouds. They would look in the weather. They would look in the fertility of the crops. They would look all over the place. They're looking for God high and low. They're everywhere through the centuries. Looking, looking, always looking for God. And you can't find him. The, uh, one of the, <laughs> I guess it was an ironic uh, gesture and humor by Yuri Gagarin, one of the uh, first um, astronauts, or he was Russian, so a cosmonaut, uh, when he was up above the atmosphere, uh, and, the, and atheism was the official doctrine of the Soviet Union at the time, was saying, you know, I've been up here and I see no God. That you can look all you want and you won't find him because God was, is eternal and in some sense lives in a whole nother kind of place than this. And yet, and yet, he came to be with us. He comes to us. And that is the central thought, the central focus of the Christmas event, is that the God who is unfindable on our own terms, unfindable with our own resources in being able to look and to see, decides instead of having us trying to trying to have him you know have us looking for him he comes to us that is the only way we are going to find god if it were up to us to try and find him somehow through our own resources our own means our own holiness our own this our own that whatever we would always fail and god knows that he wants that connection with us nevertheless, so he comes to us because we cannot go to him. He comes to us and establishes that connection so that we are empowered to reach to him. But without his move first, all bets are off. It's not going to work. 
That is the central focusing thrust of the Christmas event, is God does not remain at a distance. God comes to us, to this wonky little dirt ball third from the sun on the, in an unimpressive part of, a, of the galaxy in a kind of a random little local group of galaxies in the midst of a gigantic cosmos. He comes to us out of love. We could have searched for him high and low and never been successful. He came to us. Let me pray. Holy One, you have come to us. This is astounding. This is wonderful. This is over the top. Thank you so much for all that this means. Jesus with us. God with us. Thank you. Amen. care and concern at this time. So let us come before the Lord in prayer. Holy One, we are grateful for the love that you continue to show and the different ways in which you have brought compassionate care into our lives. And we pray that you would uh, continue to do that. We, we are unable to enjoy many of the regular rituals and festivities that we have at Christmas this year. But perhaps you, know, you might work through that unusualness and that we might in that unusualness be drawn even more tightly to the truths behind all of those events to see you and to see your love for us expressed at Christmas. Lord, we want to pray for those in our congregation who have different needs. We think of those with health needs like Carolyn Frasina and, uh, and Bob Scott Jerry Cosby, Brian Hennig, and Shane Kelly. We think of those in long-term care facilities, such as Cornelia Grenier, and Pat and John Wade, Benny Knox, Millie Guitar, Doreen Dixon, and Edward Dixon, Marjorie Roberts, Mary Cooper, Joan Laurie, Eleanor Van Adder. So many different people who are faced with so many challenges. But in these, in these long-term care facilities, Lord, please bless these folks who may feel isolated. Thank you for the, the people who are bringing them care. We pray that you would bless them with patience and strength as they are stretched so thin these days. And all the folks in the leadership of the province and the country and the world who are desperately trying to make good choices and having a difficult time doing that. Please bless them with wisdom. Among all of these things, Lord, we need to pray for uh, the, the family and friends of David Dawson, recently deceased. Lord, thank you for the place in heaven that you have prepared for him. Thank you for how you have provided victory over death. Thank you for that, brother. We pray that you would bless the work and ministry of St. Clair Community Church and the work and ministry of Ryerson here as we carry on. Thank you for all that you do through your church, not, in, not just in Hamilton, but across the world. Churches that are having no troubles assembling, churches that are harshly persecuted. Lord, please bless all of the people gathering in your name wanting to praise you this time of year. Thank you for the love that you continue to bring in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now going to celebrate communion. And it is an interesting kind of a thing to do at a time like this in the sense that at Christmas, we're always talking about the baby. But the baby came for a purpose, and that purpose was to save us. And that saving was a huge thing for which Jesus needed to go through a very great deal. So take a moment, if you need,
to go and get some communion elements. Uh, it can be any juice of any kind, any wine, any juice. It can be uh, any bread uh, that seems good to you. Uh, and we will celebrate this together in this very 2020 kind of way. Let us pray. All glory and thanksgiving be to you, Almighty God, for creating the heavens and the earth and all that is in them, for making us in your own image, and for watching mercifully over all that you have made. All glory and thanksgiving be to you, Heavenly Father, for redeeming us in Jesus Christ, your only Son, who took our nature upon himself at that first crucial Christmas time in the manger in Bethlehem, born among us. And in obedience accepted death those many years later, even death on a cross, who by your power was raised from the dead and is exalted forevermore. Eternal God, King of heaven and earth, the life and death of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we proclaim. His resurrection from the dead and his ascension we confess. His coming in triumph we await. Therefore, Father, we set before you this holy supper, following his command. Who the night in which he was betrayed took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Who in the same way took the cup, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant. And now, mighty God, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit, that the bread which we break may be to us communion in the body of Christ, and the cup of blessing which we bless communion in the blood of Christ. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. This we ask, trusting in the eternal sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty. And here is further, as we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so it was that Jesus, celebrating an early Passover meal together with his best friends, the disciples, during the meal, took some of the bread that was there at the table, and he thanked God for that, and he broke it. And he said, this bread is my body, and it is broken. It is broken for you. In the same way, he took some of the wine that was there at the table, and pouring it out, after thanking God for it, he said, this wine is my blood, and it is poured out, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you eat this bread, whenever you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. And these, wherever they are, are the gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, shed for you. remembrance of the Lord Most High dying for us. Let us pray. Holy One, such a simple little thing to do together. And, and yet so profound. Thank you for giving us reminders in this, what we've done together, but in the thousand little things of every day that you would remind us of your love for us, your constancy in that love and our redemption in Jesus. 
Thank you for all of it. In Jesus' name. Silent Night. Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.